You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Hollis, and welcome to my family's home in Laddenville in upstate New York. Hi, my name is Hollis loudon Puig, and I'm an interior designer, and this is my family's home in Laddenville, New York, which is a suburb outside of Albany. So um, a little bit about this home is it was built in 1968. It really was incredibly dated. There was really no architectural details at all. Um, actually, a lot of people wanted to tear this house down, and my mother and I saw a lot of potential in it. Um, so we decided to purchase it in 2018, and sadly, she passed in 2020. So it's kind of been my grieving process, my creative process to redo this house and bring it up to date in terms of all of the finishes and really make it my vision, her vision. And um, I'm just happy to share it with you. So right now we're in the foyer and the house is a center hall colonial that was built in 1968. So in a center hall colonial, actually the front of the house is the back of the house. So there's a little bit of an inverse. So while we have people come in the front door, actually the front door is behind us. So this area, I tried to really create a moment where people could sit and have a drink, take their shoes off. We really don't have much room when you enter the front of the house. So this bench here, we had it done in tortoiseshell. I actually had it faux painted. and. There is a little bit of a bee theme that you're gonna to start to see throughout this house. So I had these custom Schumacher pillows made um, and I just tried to create this really soft feeling with yellows and reds. Um, this family has been in, uh, this painting has been in our family for a very, very long time. It was done by a Dutch painter um, and it's moved for the, us from house to house. And I just tried to really work off of this. Um, also, all the paintings here, I, I tried to create the room as being very symmetrical as much as I could with the two seating areas, um, but all the paintings here were actually my grandmother Pat's um, and we actually kept them in the original frames. So there's kind of this fruit motif, but um, you know, it carries into the painting here. Um, we have this big infatuation with elephants, um, so you'll also see that motif throughout the house. Um, but really the whole area here was just so that you could take your shoes off. And when we're entertaining, um, the house is a little bit smaller from the house that we moved from when we started renovating. So every single room, I wanted it to be a place where you could sit down and have a drink. So this foyer is actually between the sitting room and the dining room. So when people are coming, they can sit down, they can pull out this bench. Um, and my, my biggest thing that I was most insistent on is that I had a leopard runner. So I actually had it piped in red, again, to carry into that theme. And I'm very much a believer in that a animal print is in fact a neutral. Um, a lot of people are gonna fight me on that. A lot of people thought that this perhaps was gonna be a little too much and a little tacky. Um, but I think that it's one of those grounding patterns and everything again it depends on how it's done but i'm a big believer in a wool rug um, particularly for a stairwell as it's one of the most durable fibers um, a lot of people don't believe that but um, once you have a cat a dog a couple of kids running through this house um, you know it's worn pretty well this is the portrait of my mother barbara and again um, it really encapsulates who she was as a person, which is her with her bob, shoes off, end of the night, having a drink and just taking in, you know, the scene because it was in those moments that she always found um, really the most love for her home was when no one else was around. Um, so even in our old home, though she wasn't able to see this, there's times that I would find her actually in a room by herself staring at the walls after they'd been wallpapered just having a drink staring at her wallpaper because we both loved interior design that much. Um, but this is by far of any piece that we have uh, the most cherished um, and fought over uh, piece. So um, it, it's definitely my favorite. And anyone who passes it who has known my mother has always asked, is that her? And it is. So my design aesthetic for this house is pretty much my design aesthetic for life, kind of how I live my life. 
And there's been some people out there who have been a little critical of my more is more mentality, kind of in an Iris Apple sense, like more is more, less is a bore. Um, but you know, never in the sense of it being kitsch or over the top. Um, but really, I gravitate towards things that I like and that bring me joy, not to you know, get all Marie Kondo because I'm the exact opposite of Marie Kondo in terms of my design aesthetic. Um, but with this, I wanted each and every room to kind of have its own identity and be autonomous. And I know that there's so many people out there, particularly interior designers or people who are designing their own homes who believe that every single thing should match and every little detail from room to room, you need to have this color story. But your home is a, a living, breathing testament of who you are as a person. So if you like it, it's you and it belongs in your home. I think in terms of this home, what I just gravitated towards were really, really rich colors, patterns, textures, and we wanted our home to be lived in. So if you see along the way cat scratches or perhaps somewhere it looks like a little cabernet was spilled, it's because we really like to live in our home. Um, we're not the people to put plastic on the furniture or tell you you can't come into a certain room. So now I'm gonna take you into the living room. So the living room, one of the things that I love the most about it is actually the hallway into it because it's one of the most gracious uh, entries I've ever seen into a formal living room. So this was kind of my opportunity to do something a little bit different and a little bit fun. Um, so if you look up, what I was actually able to do is I have a wonderful decorative painter that I work with. However, what I wanted to do here once I found it was this is actually actually Celery Kimball's um, tortoiseshell wallpaper that she did with Schumacher. So rather than having it painted, I decided that it would probably be a little more time consuming, a little less time consuming, and a little more cost effective to use this beautiful wallpaper. So this was kind of the piece de resistance, and I always call it the fifth wall. Um, a lot of people say my signature is my ceiling, um, but for me, I thought it just added a lot of warmth. One of my other favorite things in this entry is this runner that I actually was able to get at Upstate Rug Supply in Hudson. And the coolest thing about this runner is that it was part of a rug that was then seamed together. So they actually took a uh, rug, they cut the sides and they seamed it together. And once we enter the living room, you'll see how well this really does tie all of the colors together. And now into the living room. So this is by far my favorite room in the house. The evolution of this room, it really took space in the sense of I wanted it to be yellow and kind of translate through the yellow from our front hall and from our uh, entryway into this room. But once I saw this Bally High quadrille wallpaper, I was obsessed. Um, Danielle Rollins has used a similar um, wallpaper. Hers was Pierre Frey, uh, but in, it was blue. And I tried every single sample and I fell absolutely in love. And I love the linear pattern to it um, because again, I had a, quite a bit of art to hang throughout the room, some sconces. Um, and so it's, it's very nice when you have a linear pat pattern to hang upon it. Um, so, this rug was Patterson, Flynn and Martin. Again, this was a repurpose from our old home. And one of the cool things I'd like to point out is that this mantle was not original to the home, nor were any of the moldings throughout. So this mantle was actually an antique from a salvage yard down in Hudson, and it was brought up. So the year, the actual year that this mantle was created, I do not know. I got very little information from the seller <laughs> other than a very good price, so I wasn't going to fight with that. Um, however, we had it transported up here and installed into the home, um, and I really think that it adds this architectural element that seems like it's much more original to the home, and it's ornate but without being too Baroque. Um, so the other pieces that I'd really just like to point out are my my Mario Buada mini chair. So anyone who knows the Prince of Chins and rest in peace. I, I actually had his book when I was growing up and I wanted to be an interior designer my entire life. So I used to have a bio file that I would rip 
pages out of. And most all of them were Mario's work. <laughs> and he always loved to put in mini chairs. So I found this actual child chair and I had it upholstered in this cashmere fabric that I also had this table skirt made out of uh, with a little Samuel and Sons gimp around the outside. And I am very petite, so I actually do at times like take a nice seat in the chair. Um, I do have some relatives who are 6'4", but all of us females are about five feet. So uh, this definitely is a talking point and we absolutely love it, as is Charles, which this was found by my mother. And uh, we had no idea what to do with him, but now he's become a staple and he has a bow for every holiday. Some of my favorite pieces are done by Susan English. Um, I worked with uh, Catherine Markle of Markle Fine Arts and both this piece and the piece on the opposite side behind the baby grand piano are both done um, by Susan English and she's a living artist today. And somehow it just worked out that the colors tied absolutely everything together. Um, the other little elements again in this house is this again, very Baroque, very intricate coffee table, which was my great, great grandmother's. And it was a black lacquer. And I had it faux painted in this faux verdigris. And actually it was her idea, but I don't wear Louboutins. I don't find them very comfortable, but to not paint the back of the um, legs. So it's kind of these unexpected elements um, throughout that we, you know, try to incorporate. And I always want to make sure that there's a couple things that are a little unexpected. Um, these chairs are also my favorite, a little destroyed by George, our cat, not Charles. Um, but the Scalamandre uh, velvet laser cut faux bois. Um, I did just a very nice Ronaldo crushed velvet. And again, a lot of these elements were inherited, um, such as, you know, this mirror was my grandmother's and also a lot of toll. So if you see over here, I have a really nice collection of toll. And this is something that my mother and I did together. Um, and th these are all antiques, but there are some new toll artists out there to explore. Toll is sculpture that's done out of, um, out of metal. So usually it's very delicate. It usually has several different pieces to it that are then melded together, painted. Um, more often than not, toll is done in a sculptural sense with flowers. Um, so one, one home goods find in here that actually a lot of people I don't think would expect is this. And I have to say, we have uh, this kind of our whole family. The snow globe uh, collection got a little out of hand when we were younger. Um, we we would give my mom a lot of snow globes um, that you know were from Disney or something, and I would love to know where those are. I now have taken it upon myself to just go completely crazy <laughs> with my flowers. Uh, so every floral arrangement done in the home has been done by myself. Uh, these, I actually, I must admit uh, to everyone watching Homeworthy today, were done by me this morning in my kitchen, um, in my sweatpants at four o'clock in the morning because that's when my creative juices really get flowing. So before moving into this house, again, most people thought the land was worth more than the house, um, which is probably true. We're actually uh, located on a parcel of land that behind us is Forever Wild. So the Autobahn Society, you actually can't build on it. So when you pull up our driveway, it's kind of like uh, pulling into a scene of a Disney movie where all the animals and critters come out and you have uh, birds everywhere. Um, but the inside of the house, um, I mean, it was tragic um, to say the least. Uh, it really, again, not a stitch of molding, linoleum. Um, actually, this house was infested with bees, which I'd love to get into that story a little bit later. But there was a push uh, by one family member to call this the honey bee house. Um, but I let them know affectionately that we are not Mount Vernon um, and we can't give our house a name. 
pretty much every single thing in here is new, but new in the sense of that it's old. So now I'd like to welcome you into what we affectionately call the green room. So one of the reasons we call this the green room is because this little den was green when we actually purchased the house and it was a putrid, very, very, very ugly, almost, I, I don't need to elaborate further, but green. Um, and somehow that stuck with us. So I decided to work off of that and I ended up finding over time, actually the last layer of this room was this William Morris Blackthorn wallpaper. I fell absolutely in love with it and it was the finishing touch um, for the walls. And it seems like it's almost always been here. Um, we also call it the green room because for some reason everyone spills their secrets in it. And for anyone who has ever been on a talk show, the green room is where you kind of, you say everything that you don't want said. Um, so this room is incredibly clubby. Again, we're located in Lanaville, close to Saratoga. So there is a lot of um, horse paraphernalia, a lot of different pieces, but I'd like to also point out that my family was in the horse industry. My father owns thoroughbred horses. Um, but some of the coolest pieces in this room, I have to say, um, is this framed Hermes scarf. This was one of my mother's. We had it matted in silk, and this is actually a hand-painted frame with gold gilt. Um, a juxtaposition, again, in terms of art, is this Stephen Barris piece that was done on latex. It was actually done on stretch balloons. Above the mantle, uh, a Hudson River painting that, again, was collected by my mother and my father. It was one of the first pieces that they ever purchased together. Um, and just below are two brass Tommy Mitchell toll sculptures that were commissioned by my mother and I before she passed. So a lot of Staffordshire in here, a lot of layers. Um, but that this is definitely our family's chill room. But by far, I think my favorite thing in the entire room would have to be this coffee table. And again, this is an heirloom. This was actually a Civil War drum and it was then converted into a coffee table. So it's definitely one of my absolute favorite pieces. I don't think some historical archivist, my mother was one, would be okay with us using it as a table, but she was, so she co-signed that. It's incredibly cozy. We run the fire. It's a, we have a gas fire. We're fakers. <laughs> and we even run that during the summer. And uh, there's lots of books everywhere. Uh, we're avid readers. And um, again, an ode to Alice in Wonderland, a theme you'll see throughout the house. Uh, my mother, we used to affectionately call Alice. Um, but definitely this room evolved over time um, with the stark carpet, the geometric, um, but really every single piece um, has created kind of this, you're, you feel enveloped in warmth. And I think the William Morris wallpaper really does that. So now from the green room, we're gonna go to the dining room. So welcome to our dining room. Uh, this has gotten more entertaining over the past two years than I ever could have imagined. Um, as I said, with COVID, we've all been spending a lot of time at home. So holidays are one of my favorite things to, to do. Um, uh, for anyone who wants to check me out on Instagram, I am a tablescape um, amateur. <laughs> so uh, definitely I'm not, I'm not a Julia Amory um, and I am definitely not a Kimberly Whitman, but I do love a nice tablescape. So for this room, what I started with was a wallpaper, which is the Celery Kimball um, Acanthus wallpaper for Schumacher, which is actually a grass cloth. So one of the things that I really fell in love with, and actually I did select while my mother was still alive, was this reissue for... Um, Scalamandre colony fabric. So it kind of has this strie background, it's all brocade. And this is really what the jumping off point was for the entire room. So actually we took a swatch of this to New York Now, which is a big trade show for interior designers and for home decor stores. Um, 
at uh, the Javits Center. And my mother, when she and I, when she was still alive, we actually had the privilege of meeting Tommy Mitchell, who in the green room, you guys saw that we did some toll sculptures with him and had them commissioned. And I actually had a swatch in my bag, like the, uh, the interior designer that I am. And we handed it over to him and he created these two beautiful toll sculptures for us. And he perfectly matched the pink. And it was a very bittersweet moment when they actually arrived um, two and a half months after her passing because it was very, a beautiful moment. He personally reached out. So thank you, Tommy, if you're watching this episode. Uh, it was one of the most amazing experiences. One of the other things that I absolutely love about this is this Andrew Brischler piece. This was actually done all with colored pencil and his work is some of the most amazing art that I have ever seen. Um, and it works so well with this rose medallion um, huge urn that we have that our cat George loves to climb on top of. Um, how it's still standing and hasn't broken, I don't know, or how he's not at the bottom of it. I also, I don't know that. I, I don't actually know if he might be in there. Um, but another unexpected thing in this room that I absolutely love is this sofa. So this was my grandmother's and I had it reupholstered in a um, old world weavers, just creamy, um, fabric and I love the brush trim. A lot of people don't do that. Um, George has had a little bit of a field day on it. Um, but I, I thought it was one of those cool things where again, this table has leaves that will pull out, but it's always nice to kind of have some other place to have a drink, to relax, to chill out. Um, and I always love also hanging dishes. So as you can see over here, some of these are Anna Weatherly. The others, again, I've gotten through, I do a lot of shopping on First Dibs and a lot on Cherish. And um, just creating a nice little suite of that. Um, I also use these Samuel and Sons tie backs. Um, a lot of people actually use them to tie back the curtains, but I thought it was the most fun to have them hanging on the side, almost kind of just as this little decorative unexpected element. So it's a different way to use tassels um, where some people, again, they think it's a little dated looking, but it's kind of an updated way of using tassels rather than as using them a really heavy tie back. So this is the vestibule. We have the foyer and then we also have the vestibule. And the vestibule is actually, again, the entrance to the home. With the center hall colonial, the back of the house is the front of the house. The front of the house is the back of the house. A little confusing, but this is where we actually welcome our guests. So when they first enter, what you're greeted with are these amazing De Gournay panels. And these actually are from a house downstate and they were painstakingly removed. And then I had them put on wood panels and then boxed in. So I had an amazing carpenter who was able to do this for me and build out all the paneling. Um, but one of the coolest things about this house that was not cool at the time, but in retrospect is an amazing story. For any of you who do not know, um, there are quite a few now endangered insects and I, I think bees fall under that category. Monarch butterflies were just added to the list, but um, bees are actually now considered endangered. And when we started the renovation of this house, we decided to rip open so I could put up this nice vintage chandelier I had found at an antique store. We had to open up for the wiring and what there was in there was over 40,000 bees. So we had to have them humanely removed. That's actually a whole process. It's illegal to not humanely remove bees. And they were transported to a very, very nice home. But as an ode to the bees, what I decided to do was wallpaper the ceiling. As I said, it's the fifth wall with this gorgeous Pharaoh and Ball wallpaper that played on the blue from the De Gournay panels. So this little area, again, is where our guests first come in and then they can enter into the foyer um, and just spend some time in our foyer. 
and marvel at all of the art. However, again, the bees were a nightmare, but they've inspired so much throughout our home. Um, again, Schumacher has done some amazing prints with bees, um, but we thought it was great for them to be, again, when the wallpaper hanger came and spoke to me, he said, Hollis, would you like the bees to be facing outward or the other way? And technically, as this is the front door, I had him line it so that they were flying out because we really do not want them to come back. And now I'm gonna take you to one of my favorite rooms, which is also one of the smallest rooms in this house. So welcome to my jewel box. That's what I affectionately call this powder room and pretty much every powder room that I do. As an interior designer, everyone always asks me, what's your favorite room to do? And I say a powder room. And it's really because it is one of the only rooms in the home, aside from your main rooms for entertaining, that a guest gets to see. Uh, so I always like to put on a little bit of a show, and this for me was quite the show. Um, this wallpaper is Dara by Emmanuel Canova, and I saw this wallpaper and I knew that I had to do it, and I wanted to do a black bathroom, and everyone thought that was absolute insanity, and I said, no, I want black lacquer and I want this black wallpaper. So for this bathroom, the first thing that I chose was of course the wallpaper and then the basket weave marble flooring. I did these flowers myself. I just feel like they're so, so, so happy. And one of the last things that I did was I put grass cloth on the ceiling. This is a really cool shades of light um, fixture that really is this nice canopy. And I decided that I wanted to add that one textural element. So there were so many colors to play off of, but the green seemed to me to be the happiest and the best. So the B theme continues here. I decided to continue from the vestibule onto the wallpaper in here. And then it brings you into my magnificent pantry. I don't know if any of you have seen the Hulu Kardashians lately, but I have, and Kris Jenner has quite the pantry for all of her uh, china. I can't compete with you, Chris, but this is my Alice in Wonderland pantry. So I just wanna point out a couple of my favorite things. So as many of you know, we called my mother Alice because she said she lived in Wonderland every day and she was a little impractical. Um, so what I was able to work off of is from our former home, we actually had a lot of this vintage, I wish I could tell you who made it, Alice in Wonderland fabric. So this was the jumping off point. Once I saw this, I decided that I would needed to use this Brunswick & Fee Avera wallpaper. And everything in here, it's a little bit wild. People don't really understand that it's a pantry, but we collect a lot of different glasses, a lot of different salt shakers. Um, again, a little bit of a high-end hoarder, um, but this desk was where I would sit and do all of my correspondence. Um, this is not where I design for all my clients, um, but one of the fun things that I like to do is I like to get creative with framing. So I have these beautiful uh, Alice in Wonderland um, ornaments that of course I would never put on a tree. Um, I had them done in a shadow box, um, some more toll, and of course my one king's lane find there's quite a few finds in here that are very affordable um another little brunswick piece here every bar you need to have your deep sink and over here we got very tight on space we went from a much larger house to now a much smaller house and i really wanted to have everything concealed so in here we have the washer and dryer set which I think for anyone, we actually have a little bit of wash in there, but we live here. Um, and for some art, I did do vintage cocktail napkins. So very fun, very cool. So one of my design hacks for this pantry was I wanted to do a backsplash, but I didn't want to do too much wallpaper. So what I actually did was I had mirror cut and I even had mirror cut for all of the outlets. And that made this seem so much larger. It makes the whole space so, so, so much larger than it actually is. 
And one of my favorite Amazon finds were these colored glasses. Colored glasses really having a moment. So I picked up a bunch of these. Um, I've actually used colored glass before on one of my Easter tables, but definitely colored stemware is very, very, very fun. And for some reason, we always have people popping in, always have out nuts. I mean, if there are people coming into your home, like have something for them to nibble on. That's just my one suggestion. And paper straws. Who doesn't like a straw? Now, welcome to my kitchen. So with everything going on with COVID, one of the things that I was really, really, really dead set on with the renovation of this home was that I had a window seat and I wanted a bay window. So Pella sadly could not get me my windows in time. So one of the design hacks that I decided to do very last minute and it has become one of the coolest things I have done in this entire home is with the custom cabinetry, I had a crisscross mirrored um, motif and when I decided that I needed this bay window so that we could have a window seat, pull our table out, entertain more, um, I had my carpenter make panels on either side that are actually mirrored. And this is, again, something that is such a trick. When people come into the home, it really takes them a very, 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 very long time to realize that these are not, in fact, windows. So not only were we able to create more room to entertain, we were able to bust out outside on the exterior, it's paneled, but I was able to get my window seat and again, create the illusion of a lot more space. Um, we were able then to, again, I had my bird and thistle wallpaper put up with my ferro and ball bar borrowed light. I like to do a little detail on my cushions. This is Samuel and Sons, and this is actually Old World Weaver's Krypton. For those of you who aren't familiar with Krypton, I can spill wine on this and it will just pool. So for any of you who have children, it's the new Sunbrella. So welcome to the Red Room, or shall we say the Santa Room. So for those of you who do not know, which is most all of you, my mother was a large collector of antique Santa Claus, all post-World War II. And it started as a tradition between she and my grandmother. Uh, my grandmother brought her to her first antique show, just like my mother brought me antiquing and instilled that love in me. And the very first thing she ever purchased was a antique Santa Claus. And at her next antique show, she purchased another. And somehow this has evolved in what will one day, I think, be the absolute best uh, appraisal on Antiques Roadshow. So Barbara D's Roth, get ready. Um, so we have dedicated an entire room of our home to this. Um, I would love to show you a little bit more, but this is just a sneak peek. Uh, more will be coming for Christmas. Um, but any, any religion, any people can appreciate the Santa Clauses. So I will just pull out a couple of my absolute favorites. This one right here, which I will pull down, which is Santa in a hot air balloon, a little blimp. This is one of the coolest. Um, but she did everything from um, candy jars to um, pins. Uh, this little Cupie is one of my favorite. This is before Cupie was really um, a mainstream, kind of like a Madame Alexander. Uh, some of the other pieces in here that I absolutely adore are this little, it's almost like a pine cone um, Santa Claus. And now I'd love to show you my favorite bedroom in the house. So this bedroom, again, has many, many, many layers. And I think one of my favorite pieces in this entire room is actually this Hermes scarf that was my mother's. So she actually never had the opportunity to wear it when we were going through her things. It was actually still in the box and I had it framed um, and I had it matted in a Brunswick and Fee faux bois with a fillet um, along the side. Um, but again, when we bought this home and I started the renovation process post-COVID, uh, space was very, very, very difficult and I knew I wanted a queen bed. Um, and there really wasn't anywhere to situate it other than this wall or this wall. And of course we have the windows. So what was here 
was actually bifold closing terrible closet doors. So I busted this open and put paneling on the back, but this is actually not done by my carpenter. These are actually old doors that were then refurbished and placed upon the back so that it looks like they're built in. And then I had my electrician do pocket lighting up top and that actually has a nice dimmer and my two swinging lamps with my Vaughn lampshades. Um, and the piece above the bed is actually Pamela Gemmel. Many of you are probably familiar with a lot of her work. Um, this is actually was purchased many, many, many years ago um, and is one of her originals. But uh, again, it, this was way before she has the notoriety that she does now and is one of her original pieces. So one of my things for every bedroom that I think should have is a bench at the end of the bed for you to take your shoes off at the end of the night. So this was an antique bench, it's on rollers, and I had it upholstered in this vervain ombre uh, fabric uh, in this hot pink. And I did a Samuel and Sons gimp trim and a um, French finish, a uh, little bit of a nail head. Um, and another thing that I love about this room is this writing desk. So we kind of have this Chippendale style writing desk that actually gets quite a bit of use. Um, of course, right now um, it's flanked in flowers, but usually what it's covered in is my stationery. Um, I'm a big, big thank you note person. Um, and behind us we have a, uh, again, I love to frame unexpected things as a, uh, an heirloom piece. It was one of my great grandmother's uh, fans and I had that framed. Um, these panels, um, I had a nice detail done along the side that is uh, Scalamandre and I'm a huge fan of natural bamboo blinds. Um, I've tried to do the fabric Roman shades, but they just, they just sometimes don't do it for me. So this room, what's really cool about it is that I feel like it has a little bit of a West Indies vibe. Um, we have this nice um, chaise lounge, uh, very, very glamorous. Again, Gild the Lily. I have my uh, bullion trim along the side of my throw. And then um, instead of doing one long dresser, what I decided to do was this pair of antique dressers that had again been in our family. It's really hard to find a long piece and I thought the set was very, very, very cool and created a great deal of symmetry. Um, again, varying lengths, but we're really into family photos. Um, some toll sculptures. I have my little Eloise here who I aspire to be one day, uh, living out of a hotel. Um, Eloise and Weenie, the little Limoges box. Okay, another thing that I really like to do is I love mixing my linens. So I love doing a block print linen and mixing my sheets. So that's something, I'm a big proponent of white sheets. I like a crisp white bed, but when it comes to my pillowcases, I always like to mix in really cool different block prints. And you always have to have a little needle point. I mean, you need a little needle point here, you need a little needle point here, and if this doesn't embody my ethos, then I don't know what is. So too much of a good thing is wonderful. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.